our show back in 2000, 2001 on a project Red Star. Bob's a marine scientist. Um, he does research. We're not doing research. We're putting fish in the water. Tanks on the ground, fish in the water. That's the goal. And what's going to be a system that's continuous, not we're going to put 5,000 in and we're going to sit around and drink cocktails two years later, come back and do it. It should be a continuous system if this thing works. Does it work? The initial one is we're going to set up a, we'll call it a model system, model hatchery. We'll have two tanks producing 5,000 each, um, self-sufficient. And if everything works, we'll put 10,000 redfish in. If that model is successful, we'll then develop what we call satellites. That's an example, Cerro Bay, Tampa, Pensacola, wherever. You can just set them up and they're expandable. You can start with two tanks, you can make it four tanks, six tanks, whatever you want, and keep going. Um, the advantage of satellites, as opposed to a huge system, let's say like Moat Marine, or even Texas, is if something happens to the main facility, you're done. So let's say something happened in the sterile, where well, you're still producing fish up and down the coast on a continuous basis, not a one-time gig. You know, hopefully this will grow into down the road into like millions of fish. But you got to start somewhere. You got to get that model working perfectly, so that we can go to whoever Bob Willis and say, "Here's your system. Let's get it set up, and we move it down the road." Um, Everybody, everybody fishes kind of, yeah. So you realize that fishing is kind of going to this herd? Okay. Um, that's due to several reasons. Everybody wants to blame Okeechobee and the good sugar. I'm not saying they're innocent, innocent. But there's more to it. There's, you've got, we've had, besides that, cold, super cold winters, um, population, Lee County from 99 to now has increased three times. 340,000 people. Let's take 10% of that, that actually, let's say with fish, that's 34,000 extra anglers. When I started the show back in 99, and I had a guide staff, we'd go out, and if the guide saw one guy three miles away, we were moving. I'm, I was born in Miami. I'm like, he's three miles away, why are we moving? Well, then, by the time I finished the show, we literally had a park beside us, okay? So as you increase population, it's like a grocery store. A grocery store can handle 100 people. Well, if you got 200 people, it's not gonna work. It depletes, okay? So population plays into this. And I don't have an answer for that. Um, the other part of this is technology. Better rods, better reels. You can cast further, lines, boats that float in four inches of water. Didn't have that. 30 years ago. I mean, when you fish backcountry, you walk there. <laughs> if you wanted to find a spot, 10,000 islands are here in some back spot, 30, 40 years ago, you had to find an old guy like me that went around and fished. GPS, I can put you anywhere in the world, drop you in the middle of it, and you can find your way out. They now have GPS, this Garmin's got one, I think it's already out. It's actually live time. You can watch the fish swim. Most GPS's, when it marks, you're already past it. This is like, there's Bob, okay, and he's swimming. So they're actually marking swordfish offshore for the ones they want right now. So technology plays a huge part in this. That, and, and you know, it's very handy to have, but it's detrimental to what we're doing. Um, does that make sense to everybody? So, I mean, there, it's great and all, but it does have a downside. Um, and the thing with this, putting the fish back in the water, like I said, you can have catch and release all you want, but if you're already at a, at a negative point, it'll never catch up. I mean, Mother Nature needs a Red Bull, a Red Bull occasionally. I mean, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna give a shot of fish and hopefully keep it going, okay? I had to cut mine short because he was very long moving. <laughs> it was a red bull. <laughs> a red bull. All right, uh, any questions or anything? Okay, we'll what about habitats? Uh, I've seen them like under a dock. I'm just going to put some in and 
Yeah, I really wonder what they do. We're on glory units now. Um, we're going to lean <coughs> heavily on the FWC. They've done that research. Yeah. where they want fish put and they figure they have the best survival rate. Bob Wozno also plays into that. We're not scientists, mm -hmm. okay? So we have to defer to them. You may have a secret place under a bridge or something that we can put, you know, 5,000 there and kill them. But if it's not conducive with their studies, you know, we got to go that way. I'd like to add to something too. Because you can, Texas produces 40 million redfish a year, that doesn't mean we stock 40 million. They're going to go out and see with their large seine nets and see what type of forage fish and, and bait fish and crabs and stuff that are available. And they will, the marine biologists at Vester will give us a number of what they feel is comfortable to, to put in certain.